So this is, this is a review on how to design a website. I'm going to concentrate on design patterns, specifically model view controller. So first we have gone through how to make a storyboard. You, you choose your technology, PowerPoint, or whatever suits you best. The thing is that we want to inform the public. We want to do any of these uh, as your main objective. In our case, the case, the case study that I gave you uh, is more like a company portal, so we're going to help staff do the work. So let's try doing a, a storyboard. Right? So the storyboard we draw, in this case we used PowerPoint. So we set up our components. Each one of these uh, circles, rectangles, is a component. In, in HTML, we mean by that mostly divs. They could be spans, they could be paragraphs, they could be tables. Make sure to give each one of them an, a name with using the, the ID attribute in HTML so we can later on use them in Ajax to perform uh, nice looking uh, effects on the screen. For now, it's just a matter of discipline. And we're going to transform these into HTML. This is just one example of it. You can make your own. Okay. And we're going to use Dreamweaver for helping us out with doing this. Okay. So, as we already said, the purpose here is for you to do a, a an elevator pitch. So you're gonna you're gonna sell this idea to your customer, and for this you're gonna show the screen as it would for real, assuming that you haven't started programming yet. So what you want to do is to show your customer what the functionality will be. It's not functional, of course. It's just making as if people are clicking on things and they are typing things and they are selecting menu options and then things are showing on the screen, like reports. So you need to practice your, your speech so that it matches what's happening on the screen. You need to come up with something. 30 seconds or a minute would be fine. You don't need to spend more time on this than that. Don't get too carried away with effects. For example, this marketing to newsfeed looks very innocent, but when you program it, it's not that easy. So just pay attention to what you're doing. As you, as you grow your programming skills, you'll know what you can promise in PowerPoint and you what cannot promise because it's too hard to, or too costly to do at that point. At the end of the day, what you want to do here is to have a, a simulation of a complete session so the user would have done logins and they would have done a number of things according, for example, to what department they work for. And they, they would have seen reports. And the purpose of this is for you to think about your database. So what your database needs to have to be able to produce these reports alongside with programming, of course. And when you're done with this, you log out. So the session will also be mentioned, although maybe not described in full because that's not the point. And so, basically, the, the, the story here is that you want to watch out for what you are selling. Uh, as you get more competent in programming, you'll, you'll have more idea on how much time you're going to spend programming things. So you'll be able to make a calculation of how many uh, professional hours you'll be spending on things. And you'll be able to be more accurate when you charge your user for, for a pro project. So this is a demo. Okay, so what I need you to do is to come up with this storyboard and then come up with a simple website that simulates doing exactly the same thing, but actually in PHP and HTML. At this point in time, we don't have a database connected to the website, so it's going to simulate connecting, it's going to simulate calculating, it's going to make everything as fake, but it's going to look like real. Okay. Now, as far as the uh, design patterns, remember the, the keyword, design patterns, model view controller, we have talked about it extensively. Here's a review on that. 
A design pattern is just a convention. It's a way of doing things. It doesn't have to be the way you do it. But if you subscribe to this uh, way of doing things, you'll be able to communicate with other developers and people around who do design as well and architecture. And in our case, MVC starts for, st stands for Model View Controller. So a controller will be a program in PHP. It won't contain any HTML. A view will be a page in HTML. It will have very little PHP. The less, the better. We won't be able to to take all the PHP away, but the, the less we have, the better. And the model will be a data structure in memory. Remember, we talked about beans, where beans are objects, and beans are, uh, of course, instances of a class. I'm talking about object-oriented programming. And in a class, we have attributes. So attributes must resemble fields in a database. So you have to make a correlation between your tables in the database and beans, which will become models in memory. We went through MVC looking at things like this. We start with a client which uh, does something on the screen, like input names and users, and then passes control over to a view. The view will be uh, called upon through a request, and this is HTTP. So a request is a name of a method in that protocol in HTTP, meaning that we're going to call index.html. So that request will be processed by the server, in this case Apache 2.2. The view will then be dispatched over to the client once again. The copy will be sent, and that copy will be rendered on the, the client's browser screen. So remember the keyword render, it means we paint the form or whatever index.html has, and that response will then be seen by the user who will in turn interact with it again clicking on things typing things whatever it needs to do and once it's done then the user interaction will have filled in for in our case a user and password so that those are the two pieces of information that will get sent over to the controller the controller will be receiving those through a submission. The submission will receive packages, packages on HTTP, some of them which will have that user and password on them. So we have a submission. The controller will be a PHP program which will unpack the user and password and do whatever business rule it needs to do on them. By business rules, I mean something like a decision, a database query or any other computation that needs to be done and which the user will not see it will only see the results of those when those business rules have been executed the controller will redirect control of the flow of execution to a second view it could be the same view we had in the first place or it can be another one in any case it's a redirection to the next view in turn so the view now is able to pass on control to the client. In this case, we have a second rendering of the view. We could be looking at the results of authenticating the user. So the user's name and any other information relating to the user could be seen on the, on the client's browser alongside with any other structure that the, that the site shows the client depending on what the user does, where he or she works for, etc. So that's MVC. Just recall that we have never called a view from a view. We have never called a controller from a controller. We always alternate view, controller, view, controller, view, controller. So once again, client view, view, client, client controller, and for the first time that the user reaches a controller, the server will have a chance for you to start a session, meaning that there's a unique ID associated with all the 
navigation that the user does on the website relating to a single point on the, on the internet where the client is and that session will remain in, in use as long as we have a valid credential. The credential will be a bean where we store something about the user. It can be the user and password or maybe just a user name or maybe a user ID, anything that counts as a credential. From that point on, that credential will travel back and forth between views, controllers, and clients until one of two things happen. Either the user, the client, doesn't do anything for a number of minutes, maybe 30 or 25 minutes. The computer is idle, so is the server, and then the, the session times out, or the user explicitly says, I want to log off, in which case the server will, will automatically cancel the session, cancel the ID, and everything that the user does from then on will need re-authentication. So that's what the model is good for, among other things. So execution of flow, remember, view controller. And here I'm showing you a couple of the code snippets we have been using and how we invoke the view as from the point of view of the view. And then we go to the controller and we pass out on the user and password. And we receive control on, this, on the controller and we extract parameters. We start a session and we redirect. When we reach back on a, on a view, we can recover the name of the user as the bean through a PHP snippet that looks like this and we can go on to the next controller. And finally, there will be a time when you want to destroy the session. So on page 234 of the book, a reference is made as to this instruction that you see on the screen, session destroy. So you will want to know where to include that command that will effectively destroy the session. That's what we're going to be doing in a short while. So to finish this uh, explanation, you need to come up with a navigation map. The navigation map is just a, a graphical representation on how many paths the user has to surf the website. By surfing the website, I mean where can the user go from, from a given point. For example, the landing page. It can go to what other places. So you surf, you, you traverse, or you, you go through the website in any particular order that is valid. So you want to plan for places and to add sessions, and for the moment to delete the session. And this is the case scenario that we are working on, and we will go back to it in a short while. Okay.